Thank you for joining us as we celebrate FBLA PBL Week and CTE Month and welcome to the National Presidents with our three panelists, your FBLA, PBL, and Professional Division National Presidents. I am FBLA PBL Membership Director Lisa Smothers and I will serve as your moderator for the first portion of this afternoon's presentation. During the forum, each president will give a brief update about the programs that his team is working on. This will be followed by a question and answer portion moderated by Communications Manager Laura Morgan. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the broadcast using the GoToWebinar toolbar at the top right of your screen. We will be recording this session and it will be available on our YouTube channel. For almost 75 years, teachers, students, business leaders and politicians have helped shape our past and build our future through the CTSO Career and Technical Student Organization, Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda, FBLA PBL. We celebrate career and technical education each year in February with CTE Month. How can members celebrate? You can participate in your chapter's FBLA PBL Week activities. Most chapters will have an event or activity for each day of FBLA PBL Week. Spread the word on social networks all month long by sharing your FBLA PBL story. Share your FBLA PBL story on Twitter in 140 characters or less and include hashtags, hashtag CTE month and hashtag FBLA PBL week. Write your FBLA PBL story on our national Facebook wall or post on your own wall. Need some examples? Let's ask our distinguished panel what FBLA PBL and career and technical education has done for them. We'll start with Blake and then go to Jose. Looks like we're having a few technical difficulties um, with the microphone for Blake's microphone. Um, if we can yeah. just restart. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. Sorry about that. That was just a dry run. <laughs> so uh, as an FBLA member for most of my life, I think it's about 16 years now, so about half of it, uh, I started as a freshman in high school, worked my way up uh, to a local chapter officer, a state officer for three years. And through those networking skills, uh, presenting skills that I learned, it really enabled me to build a foundation to carry with me through to uh, the real world and into my career. And so through FBLA, I've really uh, been able to uh, have a kind of a head start on a lot of other people that might not have gotten the same experiences that I did. Thanks, Blake. Jose? Sure. So first off, uh, one of the biggest ways that CTE, CTE has uh, impacted my life and what it's done for me, first off, it's allowed me to meet thousands of students across the country through FBLA, and I get to interact them daily uh, with them daily on social media, at our conferences. I've met some incredible people. I've had a chance to see what educators do firsthand in our schools across the country. Uh, it's, it's Sometimes students don't get to see what our educators do and what they go through from the perspective of our teachers um, and they do tremendous service for the students of our country and I think that every student should have an opportunity to see that from their perspective. CTE has also allowed me to discover my career goals. I've discovered that I want to pursue a career in economics, in business law, and in entrepreneurship. And I wouldn't have known this if I hadn't become involved with FBLA and with career and technical education. And finally, CTE has gotten me into the college of my dreams and has actually allowed me to not only identify my career goals, but it's given me a means to go ahead and pursue them. So without CTE, I, not only would I not be where I am today, but I wouldn't have the future ahead of me that I now have. Thanks, Jose and Blake. Um, thank you again for sharing your story. Now please welcome your FBLA National President, Jose Espinel, who will tell you more about FBLA PBL Week. Thank you, Mrs. Mothers. Chapters across the country are celebrating FBLA PBL Week, 
which began yesterday. By publicizing their activities that include everything from community service projects to having a guest speaker at a chapter meeting. Remember, FBLA PBL Week can serve as a springboard to celebrating the entire month of February for Career and Technical Education Month. After FBLA PBL Week, continue highlighting CTE by planning activities all month, from sponsoring a guest speaker at a meeting, to promoting green activities to your members, or hosting a chapter etiquette dinner. The possibilities are endless. Remember, it's not too late to recruit. Focus on recruiting underclassmen who will help maintain your chapter. Host a pizza party, movie night, field trip, or other fun activity to attract more members. Keeping your members interested and involved is the key to retention. This month is also a perfect opportunity for FBLA, FBLA middle level, and PBL members to earn national recognition by completing the BAA, MAP, High Five, or CMAP programs. We encourage you to promote our mission, which is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Chapters do this through service projects that help the school and the community, involvement with our professional division members, attending state and national leadership conferences to compete and network with other members and business leaders, and participating in our co-curricular activities, including Lead to Feed, the Virtual Business Challenge, and the stock market game. Knowing and understanding our mission will help you sell the benefits of FBLA PBL to students, administrators, and the community. Make sure your school, local media, business, policymakers, and the community know about CTE Month. Invite community leaders or state officers to attend your chapter meetings and communicate with public officials by writing and visiting your elected officials. This is a good opportunity to take pictures and write news stories. Take it a step farther and make sure your chapter is in the news throughout the remainder of the FBLA PBL year. Media looks for stories that are timely, includes high resolution photos, and is of interest to the community. Student award winners, group events, unique fundraisers, and projects are all great things that your chapter reporter can focus on when preparing a news release for the community or school newspaper or website. Often, journalists look for a hook to a story. Instruct your officers that when writing news releases, use words like first ever, best, largest. And be sure to share your chapter's activities with National FBLA PBL by submitting your stories and photos for our national publications. We love highlighting the success of our local chapters. Thanks, Jose. There's still time to plan for an activity for FBLA PBL Community Service Day on Saturday. You can even plan for a project for later in the month and start promoting it to your members now. Service activities help your chapter get involved and contribute directly to the community. Members learn the importance of being responsible citizens and form networks with business and community leaders. Service learning helps your members learn about real world, I'm sorry, real world issues, concerns, and needs, matches members' strengths with community needs, provides practical experience in planning and organizing, develops leadership skills, builds recognition and goodwill for the chapter, and teaches satisfaction of a job well done. Activities ideas include working with our national community service partner, the March of Dimes, volunteering at a homeless shelter, conducting a blood drive, developing community improvement projects, or developing a project with any other service organization. Now let's hear from Professional Division National President Blake Reynolds. Thanks, Lisa. All of your chapter's work this year leads up to the big finale, which is the National Leadership Conference, or NLC. By promoting the NLC during CTE Month, your school and your community will be aware of the fact that your chapter plans on sending representatives to this year's event. Promotion is especially helpful when you look for uh, funding to attend. The best and the brightest of FBLA and PBL can be uh, convened to compete, network, run for national office, and learn about leadership and careers through workshops and exhibits. Even if you don't qualify for national competition, there is still something for you. With our work, 
sessions, NLC internship opportunities, and open competitive events, you'll find many ways to connect at NLC. This year's NLC in Atlanta, Georgia, will be here before you know it. PBL's NLC is scheduled for June 24th through the 27th, and FBLA's NLC is June 29th through July 2nd. Now back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Blake. Now it's time to share what each division is working on this year. Each division president will give a brief update. This will be followed by an open forum in which you will be able to ask any of the three national officers questions. We'll begin with FBLA National President Jose Espinel. Thank you, Mrs. Smothers. I'd like to begin by offering a snapshot of the entire division, followed by some highlights from the FBLA National Officer Team's program of work. FBLA has been hard at work since July, and we're starting to see the results. Membership has increased by an outstanding 4.1% over last year's numbers at this time. Continuing at this pace, FBLA will be well on its way to accomplishing its objective of finishing the membership year with 2,016 members over the previous year's totals. While we have made great strides towards realizing this year's membership goals, we must continue to recruit and finish strong. Our Connect 10 initiative is still active. Through Connect 10, chapters that increase their membership by 10 or more over last year's totals will be recognized with ribbons at this year's National Leadership Conference. Individual members who distinguish themselves as star recruiters are also eligible for national recognition. Recruiting five members throughout the year earns you the Membership Madness Award. Go the extra mile and recruit 10 members and you are awarded Membership Mania. Submissions for these two programs are due by April 1st. Our membership, our membership growth reflects a trend that I'm honored to say is shared by all of this year's programs. Members have also been shattering expectations through the Business Achievement Awards. Thanks to all of our members who participated this year, BAA is once again FBLA's most popular program. BAA submissions are up 34% over last year's numbers. Community Service Award submissions are up 22%, and Chapter Challenge submissions have increased by 55% over last year's numbers. These are spectacular increases, showing that not only are our members engaged, participating in constructive activities that encourage membership recruitment and career development, but also that our members are more engaged, more enthusiastic, and more active than ever. Submissions for the future, business, and leader levels of the BAA are due by March 1st. America level submissions are due by April 25th. Submissions for the community and service levels of the CSA are due by March 1st. And the achievement level submissions are due by April 30th. All submissions for the action awareness section of the chapter challenge are due March 1st. Our national fall leadership conferences were a resounding success. Members from all corners of the country traveled to Omaha, Charleston, and Baltimore to experience exciting shops, speakers, and activities. This year's NFLCs featured two new programs, an updated state officer track and the FBLA Foundations track for underclassmen. I'd like to extend special thanks to PBL National Secretary Travis London for spearheading the development of the updated state officer track. Running alongside all three NFLCs, our first ever online auction raised $1,300. If we didn't get to see you at this year's NFLCs, we hope you attend during the next membership year. NFLCs can be an affordable alternative to our National Leadership Conference and offer similar networking and career development opportunities. FBLA was well represented at ACTE's annual conference. Our members, including five of our national officers, swept the outstanding business student awards. The upcoming state leadership conferences offer opportunities to connect with members, enjoy workshops, and begin the journey to national recognition through competitive events. I encourage you to make the most of your state conference. Dedicate some time each week to prepare for your competitive events, and you may find yourself at our national leadership conference in Atlanta, Georgia. If you have free time between competitions, attend a workshop or two. You may find that you learn a skill critical to your success in your future career. If you are a current state officer or are a candidate for national for state office, I encourage you to consider running for national office. 
For more information on how you can become one of next year's national officers leading the organization at the national level, visit fbla-pbl.org forward slash conferences forward slash NLC. The state leadership conferences lead directly into FBLA's National Leadership Conference. Held July 29th through July 2nd, the NLC is considered to be the pinnacle of the FBLA experience. Com competitors try their hand at winning national recognition, world-renowned speakers share their wisdom, and members network with their counterparts across the country and around the world. This year's NLC is expected to be our largest yet, so keep preparing for your competitive events and begin fundraising so your chapter can attend. Just like our members, the FBLA national officers have been hard at work accomplishing the objectives set forth in our program of work. Here are a few highlights. To improve communication, the national officer team has hosted three bi-monthly national forums to date. We have connected with hundreds of members and hope to interact with even more before the end of the year. The next national forum will be held on March 25th from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us to hear updates from the national officers and then ask questions during a 15-minute Q&A. Those on social media during yesterday's Super Bowl 50 halftime show saw the surprise release of our latest product, fblaconnect.org. This new website replaces the national FBLA blog as our primary source for continuous and engaging FBLA news. Additionally, the site adds several key functionalities. Members and advisors can submit articles to be featured directly on our site. Our exclusive middle-level blog features content geared exclusively toward our fastest growing division. New articles are automatically posted to FBLA social media pages upon release. If you haven't seen the new website yet, visit it today at fblaconnect.org and be sure to share it with your chapter. FBLA National Treasurer Ashton Roddinghouse shared the Trez Tips hashtag on her Twitter and Facebook accounts. The National Treasurer's Council has been working hard to obtain sponsors and is currently working on a fundraising catalog for the whole nation. FBLA National Parliamentarian Vanessa Ting created condensed parliamentary procedure guides along with an Ask FM to, at, to answer questions concerning parliamentary procedure. In addition to these highlights, we've saved some of the best of our program of work for last. Keep an eye out for upcoming initiatives to aid in competitive event preparation and better involve FBLA's international chapters. To hear more about our national programs and receive daily updates, follow me on Twitter at FBLA President and like my Facebook page, FBLA National President. Don't hesitate to reach out to me directly with any questions. You can always email me at fblapres at fbla.org or alternatively may contact me through Twitter or Facebook. Thank you, Jose. Uh, we'll now hear from PBL National President Karthik Krishnan. Again, it seems we're having a few microphone difficulties, um, so. Across the nation from our committee members to create this bylaw amendment. We've taken the feedback from the town hall and we'll appropriate that into the final amendment that we submit in the spring. So if you have any questions on the bylaw amendment or have any feedback that you'd like to give us still, our doors are always open and feel free to reach out to the national officers. The next task that our team worked on was campaign policy reform. Um, we work with the staff to provide some of the policies that you'll see in the candidate guide, so I advise you take a look at the, camp uh, the campaign guide available on fbla.org. Get ready to use social media, use all the skills that you've learned in the classroom to have an engaging campaign. And if you have any questions on running a campaign for national office or any of the guidelines set out in the candidate guide, feel free to reach out to me or Ms. Lisa Smothers at the National Center. Earlier this winter, during December, we set out a competitive event application, uh, mobile application development committee um, request for committee members. And many, many members from across the nation uh, have agreed to participate, including a member from FBLA. Um, and we've used those committee members to start um, the ground level 
development on an application that we hope to release in the near future. Um, again, more of that to come in the, in the next few months. But the idea is to create a competitive event study guide and in the form of an application that's more engaging to our membership. So look forward to that. Um, and finally, um, in the coming year, the Board of Directors has approved um, the ability for graduate students to participate in our program, in our competitive event program more specifically, um, and allow them to compete. So that is something that's really exciting. We hope to roll out in the 2018 National Leadership Conference in Anaheim. And that's it for my update. I pass it over to Blake. Thanks, Karthik. And it sounds like there's some great work being accomplished in both FBLA and PBL. The professional division's membership currently stands at just over 3,100 members, which is slightly up from last year and an upward trend over the last 10 years. A reminder to those of you who are PD members to submit your dues by March 1st to receive your full membership benefits. We received very positive feedback from the four states that are piloting our anniversary membership year. This initiative enables us to enable someone's membership date to start on the day they register and pay dues rather than in the middle of a membership year. For members who want to take the PD involvement to the next level, the professional division has three committees that we encourage members to join. We first have our state chapter development committee, which is tasked with working with states to start new PD chapters or strengthening current ones. And this has been a major focus of ours this year and will continue to be through next year. Our conference experience committee ensures that our members get the most out of the national conferences, including signing up PD members to staff our booth, writing open event tests, and identifying conference workshops that would be of interest to PD members. And finally, we have our membership and alumni retention committee, which explores activities, programs, opportunities, and resources that help recruit and retain PD members. You may have noticed our new brochures and booth signage at the NFLC this past November. And like the NFL's NFLC, we will again have our booth at both the FBLA and PBL NLCs in Atlanta, where we will offer the hugely popular resume reviews, on-site sign-up for members, information on how to start a PD chapter, and how members can get involved with other divisions. So you can interact one-on-one -on -one with one of your uh, national officers or professional division members for that information. And finally, we will again be sponsoring a competitive event at the FBLA and PBL NLCs. Our goal is to raise $5,000 to sponsor these events. So visit the website on your screen to donate or go to fbla.org and click on PD Competitive Events Campaign under the PD dropdown. All right. Well, thank you, Jose, Karthik, and Blake for sharing the latest news from each of your divisions. So it looks like we had a number of questions submitted, so we'll open up the forum now. Um, if we run out of time, we'll email you individually to answer any questions that we're not able to get to. So let's take our first question, which says, do you have any last minute ideas to recruit members tomorrow for each one reach one day? Um, Jose, why don't you take this one? Sure. So one idea to help recruit uh, some more members during FBLA PBL week, uh, specifically tomorrow, uh, is to invite your members to recruit members uh, and have like a some sort of point system where the more members that members recruit during the week, they can accumulate a certain number of points and they can win some prizes. So if you just keep track of these members during the week, keep track of how many new members they'll recruit, you can reward them with some prizes and that provides them with an incentive to not only recruit uh, tomorrow, but to continue to recruit throughout the week. Great, thanks. Okay, looks like our next question, um, this one's gonna be for Blake. It says, how can we recruit professional division members and are there any resources to help us do so? So great question, um, and actually professional division members are wondering how they get involved with state and local chapters. So it, it, you know, the two groups want to connect. It, I think it just takes one person reaching out to another. So for states and local chapters, um, your state chairperson or state advisor can get you a list of professional division members that are in your area, so you can reach out to them. And they can be of use in your workshops at state conferences, guest speakers, to come and speak at your local chapters, uh, judges for competitive events. And so there's a host of um, 
ways that you can involve your professional division members, and those that I have talked to um, are very, very eager to connect with chapters, so um, certainly please do so. Great. Thanks for sharing those tips, Blake. All right. Our next question is for Karthik. It says, you mentioned um, that there's going to be a proposed bylaw amendment. What is the difference between last year's proposed amendment versus this year's? Karthik? Did we lose Karthik? Okay. Um, so for the person who asked, oh, sorry, it looks like we might have lost Karthik's audio. Oh, there he is. Sorry, Laura, could you ask the question? Yes. yes. I apologize. Um, it says, you mentioned that there's a proposed bylaw amendment for this year. Can you explain the difference between last year's proposed bylaw amendment versus this year's? Absolutely, and I appreciate the question. The major difference is we took a look at the feedback that was given to us at the end of last year's National Leadership Conference. And one of the biggest concerns is that we lost the parliamentarian. Um, I, and I, I respected that opinion, and the committee did too. Um, so we brought that back. A big second difference was the lack of regional connection. The members felt that by removing the regional vice presidents, we would stop feeling that connection to our region. Um, and we did that by, we addressed that by allocating one officer to each region based on the regional connection program. All of this information and more is going to be packaged together and provided to you all before the National Leadership Conference, pending we have approval from the Board of Directors Committee on the bylaw amendments. Um, so look forward to that. Of course, if you have any more detailed questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But that's basically um, the two biggest things that we took a look at. Thanks, Karthik. Okay. Our next question is, um, do you have any suggestions on how to recruit eighth graders during FBLA week to get them started in FBLA? Jose, why don't you take this one? Yep. So... If your high school has a middle school that's nearby or if it's paired with a middle school, you can actually take some of your members down to that middle school, make sure that you talk to their administration first, and see if you can hold, a, uh, hold um, some sort of meeting where you invite some eighth graders to come to this meeting and showcase some of the things that you do through FBLA. Talk about competitive events, talk about the different travel opportunities, show that FBLA is a way for them to become integrated into high school and for them to network with a lot of new high school students to make friends and really become involved in this next step that they're taking as they move into high school. Thank you. All right, it looks like we have another question about the professional division. It says, can anyone become a PD member or are there certain criteria? Blake? So really the criteria for becoming a professional division member is that uh, anyone that's outside of academia can join. So uh, you can't be an FBLA member or a PBM member and also be a professional division member, you have to be kind of outside of school. So uh, anybody that actually, you know, graduates high school and, and uh, goes on to college and chooses not to be in PBL or doesn't go to college, then they're welcome to join the professional division. But really anybody, it could be from uh, your teachers, business people, uh, government uh, officials, really anyone, your parents can be members of the professional division. Everyone has something to offer and to uh, give back and be a value in the classroom. Okay, thank you. All right, it looks like we have time for one more question. Um, so we have, do you have any tips for someone who wants to run for national office? So Karthik, why don't you take this one? Absolutely. Um, the first thing I would do if, my first piece of advice would, would for you to, would be to declare your interest to your state office. Um, get critical feedback from your state advisor um, on where and how the process is to become the candidate for. Okay, I think it froze. <laughs> so, um, is an intensive yeah. academic um, constraint. So, to make sure you have a strong local chapter advisor um, and the administration is supportive of you. Um, before you begin your candidacy. Um, then I would start talking to the state leadership teams, see what um, feedback they can give you and help guide you in advice. Talk to the national officers that currently exist and see if they can give you um, direction on where to take your campaign. Um, so those, those members on the national team and the national staff are here to help you. Um, and that's about it. I think once you have all those, those check boxes lined up, I say go for it. 
This is an amazing opportunity that's going to take you beyond the classroom and give you experiences that um, are unparalleled. I was an FBLA national officer in high school um, before I joined the, the Phi Beta Lambda division. Um, and it was one of the best experiences I ever had. So um, we're here to answer your questions and give you the support you need. Talk to your state advisor and your local chapter and make sure you have the support you need. Um, and then go for it. Great. Thanks, Karthik. Well, thank you to everybody who joined us today. It looks like that's all the time we have. We did have several questions that we weren't able to get to on this forum. Um, so we will be emailing you directly. You'll either receive an email from a national staff member or one of our national officers. Um, and if you have any other questions at any time, feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is all available at fbla-pbl.org. And we hope you have a great FBLA PBL week. And remember to um, post your photos on social media and hashtag FBLA PBL week. So thank you and have a great afternoon.